Now the key with story problems and the law of signs is being able to read through the problem and draw an accurate picture. So that's the first thing we're going to practice. In example eight, we have two radar stations that are located 20 miles apart and they detect an aircraft between them. So let's draw this. We have two radar stations Here's one, here's two. They are 20 miles apart. So this is 20 miles. And they detect some sort of airplane between them. Now the angle of elevation measured by the first station is 15 degrees, so that's pretty flat. There's our 15 degrees. Whereas the angle of elevation measured by the second station is 35 degrees. So about like that. So the, here's our airplane craft. Let's see if Mrs. Johnson can draw an airplane. Right there, between them. We want to find the altitude of the airplane. So that's our X. I'm actually going to call this H. We're really looking for the height of the airplane. That's what we're trying to find. And we want to round our answer to the nearest tenth of a mile. So I have two angles here and I have a side. If I draw the triangle that I see, I've got this this, and this. I know this is 20. I know this is 15. I know this is 35. And this height or the altitude is what I'm trying to solve for. So it looks like this problem is going to have two parts to it. First, I need to solve for one of these sides. Second, I can then use Sokotoa and this right triangle to solve for H. Now it really doesn't matter which side you solve for, this long one or this shorter one. So let's just say, let's solve for the longer one. So let's call the longer one X. That's what I'm trying to solve for first. Now, next thing I noticed, I don't have a complete pair right now. However, I can get one without too much trouble. Let's find that angle, and then we'll have a complete pair. We'll have these two, which are across from each other, so they form a complete pair. And remember, to use law of signs, you have to have a complete pair. So let's start there. We have 180 degrees minus 15 degrees minus 35 degrees. That is going to give us 130 degrees. Now I have a complete pair. So sine of the angle over the side it's paired with equals sine of the angle over the side I'm trying to find. Cross multiply and solve for x. If we type all that into our calculator, and remember we're, uh, well, we're supposed to round our final answer to the nearest tenth of a mile, but this is not our final answer. This is x. Now what I'm going to do is focus on this right triangle right here, and use Sokotoa to solve for h. So let's think of what I'm using first. H is opposite. X is my hypotenuse. So if I'm using opposite and hypotenuse, that means I'm using sine. So sine of my angle equals the opposite side, which is H, over the hypotenuse, which is what I just found. Solve for H. And 
And now we can round to the nearest tenth of a mile. I get the plane has an altitude of about 3.9 miles. So, as you can see, the most important part of this is drawing an accurate picture. Once you have an accurate picture, it's easy enough to pull the triangle out of it and then to use the law of sines and Sokotoa if you need to to solve for whatever you need. So with that in mind, when we do example 9, I would like you to try to draw an accurate picture first. So what I want you to do right now is pause the video, read through the problem, and try to draw an accurate picture of what the problem is describing. I will do the same, and then we'll come back to check our pictures and see if you were able to draw an accurate picture from the description. I am very curious to see how you drew this picture, because there are actually a couple different ways that you could draw this picture based on the wording of the problem. Basically, this is an example of a very poorly worded problem. If you assume the island was between the two observation points, you would end up with a picture like this, where your island is between the two observation points. If you assume the island was off to the side of the two observation points, you would get a picture more like this one, where the island is set off to the side of the two observation points. This is a really good real-world example of the ambiguous case. Depending on how you read the problem, how you visualize the problem, you could end up with two triangles that both have the same measurements. They have the same angles and the same distance between them, but they're two very, very different triangles. So for this problem, as a class, we're going to assume the island was between the two observation points. So here's my triangle that I end up with. This is observation point number one. This is observation point number two. And the first question I'm asked is, find the distance from the second observation point to the island. So that's this right there. That's the distance I'm trying to find first. Here's my island. So right now we don't have a complete pair, but we can find one pretty quickly. 180 degrees minus 30 degrees minus 45 degrees is 105. And now we have a complete pair that are across from each other. So now that you have a complete pair, I would like you to practice the law of signs. Set up the law of signs using our complete pair and the pair you want to know about, in this case x and 30, and then solve that law of signs for x, how far the second observation point is from the island. Pause the video and try that part out now. Let's check your work. I got about 2.58 miles when I set it up and solved it all. Now, next question we're asked, what point on the shore is closest to the island? So if we draw this line here, that would make this point right there closest to the island. So we're going to call that point P. Now it asks us, how far is the island from this point? So let's label this one D, distance. We want to find the distance from the island to this point right here. Well, notice this is a right triangle, so I can just use Sokotoa here. I have hypotenuse. I am looking for opposite. So let's set up a sine equation equals the opposite over the hypotenuse. Solve for that distance to get 1.83 miles. So the island is about 1.83 miles from the shore at its closest point. So uh, there's a couple different story problems for you. Last thing we want to cover in this video are two more vocab words that will come up in your homework, your exam, and your final. The first one is grade. Now you might have seen grade when you're driving. It's those 
diamond signs that have like a hill on them and then it says like a percent that's the grade of the hill how steep the hill is basically that percent say seven percent means that the road rises seven feet for every a hundred feet so if you see a seven percent grade That means we go 100 feet over, and then we go 7 feet up. And then here's our road. So if you see any problems about grading of a road, that's what that means when you see that percent. Another very popular one that's used in trig all the time is bearing. This is usually used when we're talking about sailing or maybe even a pilot. Because when you're talking about a pilot, let's say, here's me in my little plane. It's not as helpful to say, oh, hey, there's an oncoming object that is at 210 degrees from me. And then we have to think, okay, wait, 210 degrees, so like the object's over here somewhere? That's not very helpful. Instead, it's more helpful to say where the object is in relation to the compass. So let's practice a couple of these. Let's say, for example, uh, I tell you that the bearing is north 40 degrees east. So that means we start up here at north, and then I'm going to go 40 degrees in the east direction. So that would end up about there. 40 degrees in the east direction. That's north 40 degrees east. And if you think about that, so that's what it is as, an, as a bearing, north 40 degrees east. If we put it in standard position, that would be an angle of 50 degrees. Because remember, standard position always goes from the positive x-axis. So let's try another one. Let's say we have south 50 degrees west. Now let's do this one a different color. Let's do orange. So now we go in the south direction, and then we're going to go 50 degrees west in the west direction. So south, and then we go 50 degrees west. So south 50 degrees west. So if we put this in standard position from the positive x-axis, that would be that angle, which would be 180 plus 40 more. So 180 plus 40 would give me 220 degrees. Let's write those up. So if I said south 50 degrees west, that would be the same thing as 220 degrees in standard position. So now that we've done that, I would like you to try two more. I want you to try north 60 degrees west, plot where it is on here, and then find the standard position angle, and south 27 degrees east. Plot it on here, and then find what it would be as a standard angle from the positive x-axis. So pause the video, try to plot those two just to get a little practice, and then, excuse me, come back and check your work. Let's check your work. So here we have our north 60 degrees west, north and then 60 degrees in the west direction. So in standard position, that would be 90 plus 60, which would give me 150. And then we have south 27 degrees east, so that puts me about there, which would be at 270 plus 27 more, or 297 degrees in standard position. So that gives you a little introduction to bearings, which should be in your homework exam and final, and we'll actually do several problems throughout the rest of our workbook that use bearings. But that is all for story problems using the Law of Signs. You are officially done learning about the Law of Signs. In the next lesson, we'll learn about the Law of Cosine.